let's move to the next stage which is mesh very, very simply by double clicking on it the good thing about this toolbar is if you make a change to the geometry again after you have meshed it you would need to remesh it but in the remesh section you are able to see the new geometry so it is attached to your geometry and that's a good um, thing because if you make any changes you can always come back to the mesh and then remesh the new version rather than creating the mesh settings from beginning because once your mesh settings are provided um, then if the geometry changes or if you happen to change the geometry you can easily um, change the mesh now what is mesh meshing is the technique to discretize your geometry break it into smaller elements and meshing is the technique by which CFD actually works so this is the meshing toolbar as we can see it is importing our geometry so what this toolbar has done it has imported my geometry from the geometry tab into now the meshed um, interface user interface where I can do all sorts of things with the mesh so just continuing my point on what is a mesh a mesh is a process of breaking down any geometry into finite elements discretizing it into small um, elements which can be solved so when ANSYS is actually solving any solution it is first breaking it down into a mesh so it can take every cell in that mesh and solve it individually that is what gives it the accuracy which I will demonstrate it to you now what is the meaning when we say meshing so again here it shows us our geometry our geometry has two parts if I click on the geometry the first part is a solid which is what we extruded and the second part is the enclosure that we created around it coordinate systems is our global coordinate the X Y and Z this can be left as default and connections are the ones by which the two bodies are connected notice the mesh again has a lightning sign which means it is still not ready so we would need to create mesh now the most simplest way of creating mesh is to just right click and create generate mesh or click on generate mesh this is the default mesh that CFD provides or ANSYS provides for your geometries it takes the geometry into account and then just creates a default mesh around it now while a default mesh is a good quick option to run your sim simulations but it is not necessarily the most accurate solution as you can see here that in the mesh we can see a lot of holes or we can see that the cell size is quite big let's see what we mean by a cell size so if I go to a 2d view which is the Z direction and if I zoom into one cell we can see here that the cell is quite big the cell size and the bigger the cell size the less accurate the solution is so if I go back to my 3d model and if I go to a cell the length of one triangle which is also called as one cell or one element is quite big and we need this to be as fine as possible now the downside of making it as fine as possible is that your computation will take a long time to run so what the default mesh of ANSYS means is that ANSYS uses its own brain or its own uh, methodology to generate a mesh that ANSYS thinks is the most suitable for this kind of an operation so as you can see here the software has automatically made the mesh around the circle much more finer which means the cells are much more smaller in the circle but the cells on the outskirts are much bigger and this is ANSYS way of of telling the user that this is the mesh that I have made uh, which I feel is the best for your um, um, for your work now in some cases a u user might want to accept it 
and a user might want to say that um, this is fine but in some cases where you're looking for more accuracy um, you might not always want to accept the default mesh that the software generates uh, before I go more into the mesh let me show you a bit of the toggle tools what we have here so here first toggle tool is rotate if I click on this I can rotate my geometry from a point of from a point of any axis if I want to go back to a default position I will click on the circle here and now it takes me back to its normal position but now I can see it's below the screen I can use the second one second toggle option which is pan click on pan move the geometry where I want to if I want to zoom in and zoom out I can just use the scroller on my mouse and it zooms in and zooms out if I want to expand something I can also use the zoom button here click and then expand and contract and if I per particularly want to look at something specific then the fourth toggle option which is the box zoom click on the box zoom click make a box around what you want to see and then it shows me that particular option if I want to go back to normal I can just zoom out let me go to views similar to geometry we had three views on wireframe shaded exterior and we have the same options here if I go to shaded exterior it will show me how it looks when it's opaque shaded exterior again and if I want to go wireframe it shows me what is behind the shaded exterior so all of these are different options that can be used but coming back to the mesh so my default mesh which the software has generated tells me that the element size is about 7 meters per element per cell and that's quite visible because if I zoom in to any element um, it does seem to be quite big so the 7 meter does kind of make sense considering the geometry is about 100 meters let's look at how many elements that I have so let's start with the mesh options um, it tells me here that my mesh is done for CFD that's perfect solver preference is fluent remember at the start of the video I was, I was saying that there are two main CFD um, tools which is CFX and Fluent so we are using Fluent and that's what tells me here that it is Fluent that's fine rest and it tells me the element size these are the de default settings if I go to sizing again it breaks down the size for me what is the maximum size so with that the maximum the biggest element in my geometry is about 14 meters um, and the curvature and normal um, angles are also suggested by the software itself these are all the numbers um, that the software generates for you uh, mesh um, sizing mesh quality check mesh quality yes it tells me that there is an error um, it, it doesn't say per se that look for errors it just says that um, you would want to um, check the mesh quality uh, for errors or not now error technically means accuracy error does not mean here that your geometry is wrong so if I were to take this mesh and run my simulation it will not be wrong it will only be less accurate so it depends on the accuracy that you are looking for if you are looking for a very high level precision and high accuracy then you would need a much finer mesh but if you are looking to prove a concept and if you're just looking for cumulative or if you're looking for very um, abstract um, streamlines or very abstract flow formation um, then this is fine skewness means how much of the mesh you want to skew in its literal terms and we look for maximum skewness um, of about 90 percent again this is something that if you click here um, the CFD will ensure that your maximum skewness is met then we've got inflation again that's going into the technical details which we don't need at the moment assembly advanced and the most important thing is statistics statistics tells you how many nodes and elements are there in your model nodes are the connection points between the elements and the elements is the cell that makes up that connection point so to to explain you in more 
detail if I zoom in to a mesh here the triangle that you see here what my cursor is going around the one two three and then back to one these points are called nodes so that's node number one this is node number two and this is node number three nodes are the connection points and the cell that is in between the nodes that is called an element so what we can see in our current geometry is that this consists of 3000 nodes and 14000 elements now let's see if we can increase this by giving it a finer mesh so um, if I want my geometry to be more finer what I would do is I would need to create my own mesh so there are many ways to doing it one is by setting up looking at my um, let's let me see which one is the most easiest one okay so let's start with the sizing 